This training intervention is brought to you by the Sunlam Foundation. In part three of this series, we will be looking at establishing your employment package and what you are going to take home. Why? Because there is a tremendous difference between what your employer is undertaking to pay you on recruitment and what you are actually going to take home. That's probably a good 30% less. There are 52 million South Africans today, and a lot of them are on Social Security. We have to pay for them and all the other goods and services provided by the state. That's where tax comes in. So, your present for being a graduate is that you are going to have to register as a taxpayer and start paying tax. Initially, when you get your first job, you'll be in the low end of the tax brackets, and it won't hurt too much. But as you progress, you will pay more and more, up it to 30% in the first couple of years. And then one day when you are successful and you earn more than 617,000 Rand per annum, you will join a club that pays tax at the rate of 40%. How many people are in the tax club? Well, let's look at it this way. There are about 4 million or so taxpayers in South Africa. The vast majority of them live in the lower end of the tax brackets and they don't pay too much tax. As your career progresses, you will move up the tax scale until ultimately, if you earn more than 400,000 rands a year, you will join a select group of only 378,000 South Africans. That's less than one in a hundred. One would think that after paying such a huge amount of tax, that would be the end of it. The rest would be yours. No ways. Next up will be that you will want to provide yourself with a medical aid. There are 8 million South Africans who have medical aid, but there are 42 million South Africans that are dependent on the national health system, or what there is of a national health system. You will probably want your own medical aid, and that can no longer be provided by your parents after you graduate. So you're in for a basic medical aid package of 800 or so rand a month, the very cheapest form of medical aid, going up to executive cover, which is over 3,000 rands per month. And don't think that your tax deductions are going to be worth much. Probably not more than 10% of the total t cost of your medical aid will be borne by SARS. Then come the other deductions. There's group life cover, income protection insurance, there's dread disease cover, unemployment insurance fund, and so it carries on. The problem is, where does it all go? So, draw up a T account. There's the 25,000 Rand that you might be fortunate enough to earn in your first month of employment. Now watch the deductions. UIF 125, that's pretty small. Provident fund to provide for your old age, 3,200. Then medical aid income tax, and before you know it, it all adds up to 8,000 rand out of the 25,000, leaving you with a mere 16,000 take home. This is where a lot of graduates go so horribly wrong. They think that they are going to take home their gross salary. They haven't worked out the deductions. And then even once you've worked out all the deductions, the fun hasn't ended. We have to make a budget. So you can download a budgeting tool off the internet, like this one provided by Sunlam. So we start filling it in. We put in the take-home salary, and then we look at the cost of living. It's going to cost you 5,000 rands a month to put a roof over your head, another 3,000 rand a month to feed yourself, and another 5,000 rands a month to give yourself a set of wheels. Then come all the expenses from cell phones to sport utilities and all the other good things that you would like to have. And before you know what's happened, we've spent more than we've earned. In a little summary, it would look something like that. The concept of there's a lot of the month left at the end of the money. We can always draw a pretty picture about it. So what do we do? In the old days, we'd run off to a bank and ask for a loan on the Never Never, hoping that our earnings would increase and we'd be able to pay it all back. But that's not allowed anymore because of the National Credit Act, and short-term loans are only going to see you through a couple of months. So, starting off, here are some useful tips. When you have graduated and have a job, get the basic tools of trade, but the essential thing is to be modest. Initially, you need digs, a car, a computer and a cell phone. That's it. Everything else is superfluous. It can all come with time. 
then you need to manage your risks of living in the new South Africa. What can happen to you that can financially wipe you out? We'll be doing more lectures about that later. We need to look at your requirements for medical aid, dread diseases, income protection, unemployment insurance, and all the rest. These differ from person to person. In this regard, it is very useful to get hold of a financial advisor who can get you the right product to suit you at the right price.